So there are large trout slashing adult caddis everywhere. And wouldn't you know it, I'm down to my final pair of my favorite Stillwater caddis pattern. I have a small tying kit on hand. Join me, I'll show you how I adapted one of my favorite river and stream patterns so I could stay in the game. Hello everyone, I'm Phil Rowley and welcome to my fly tying bench. If you've been here before, thanks for dropping by once again. If this is your first time here, I provide fly tying and fly fishing content that I hope makes your next day on the water just that little bit more successful. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like. If you enjoy the content on my channel, please consider subscribing. And if you hit that notification bell, you'll be notified every time I upload a video just like this one. Today we're going to tie the traveling chubby. When I was caught with just a couple of my favorite stillwater dry flies for adult caddis, the Michelux Sedge, I had to come up with something to solve the problem as fish were slashing these big traveling sedge everywhere. I needed a fly that floated well, was easy to tie, and when I stripped it, created a convincing wake to imitate those scurrying caddis. I had the stuff to tie one of my favorite river and stream dry flies, the Chubby Chernobyl, and that's how the traveling chubby came to be. Join me at the bench, I'll show you how I tie it. So let's tie the traveling chubby. I'm going to use a Daiichi 1760 number 8. You could tie these as big as a 6. You can also tie them down to a 10. Uh, 8's probably the most common size I use to match the traveling sedges. And we like these heavy hooks because they make the fly land properly. Point down, doesn't flop on its side or back because we're using this fly to imitate a traveling sedge that's just emerged and sitting on the water and it also creates a great wake so you can strip it. So I've got the uh, thread covered with, uh, sorry, I've got the shank covered with tying thread, in this case 140, uh, UTC 140, and we're going to put a little amber um, sparkle yarn tail on this to represent the shuck the cast shuck of a traveling sedge also helps create some wake. We want to trim that about half the shank length long or so and we'll trim off the excess. And the, the sedge pupa shucks are a, a bronzy amber coloration. You'll see them sitting on the water. It also adds a little bit of buoyancy. Now for the body, so I'm going to take this prepared slip and I'm just going to round the edges. Just like so. And I'm going to hold that onto the shank, grab it, go around once, twice, and then apply tension to secure it. And just form a little stubby foam tail. And I'm going to put a little bit of a wing on here because and we're going to use for the wings on this fly, there's two wing sections, a little one at the back and a larger one at the front. And I'm going to use some Widow's Web, and this is a smoke color because it matches the, the uh, traveling sedge adults I've seen. So I'm just going to tie a length of this on, a couple of wraps, nice and tight. And then just to add a little more bulk to it, I'm just going to fold it over slightly. And I'm, I'm actually going to leave a little bit, see I've formed a little bit of a ball of the, that's going to help tuck this along. That's locked in and then bring my tying thread underneath. I'm going to come in with my scissors and trim this about even with that now we're going to tie in the body and for the body you could use dubbing but I'm just going to use this brill it's a synthetic resists getting wet and it just makes tying a body a breeze so I'm just going to secure in a length of this brill so I'm just going to pull this back to expose and go back about three quarters of the way up Secure the brill along the shank, back up, 
and use this to build up Got a quick simple body it's going to give a good silhouette it approximates the color of the adult sedges you can overlap the wraps a little bit right up to Pull everything back. And then we're going to pull this over. Like so. Once, twice. Move this forward. Because we're going to make a little folded head on this. So I just want to give that a good band. And then we're going to Take some more of our wing material, more of the smoke widow's web. Secure this. And then fold it over, just like we did with the other one. A little, just a little bubble, if you will, of the widow's web. Like that. And that helps fold that over and tuck it along and then we're going to trim this gather and trim this just about we'll do some final trimming tuck that along and what we're trying to do is, is create that tent like appearance of the adult caddis and give us a wing that we can see at a little bit of distance uh, when we're out on the water when we're casting these things All right. And now all we're going to do now is fold the front section like so and bind that down. What this does is sort of suggest the head but also when I strip this this is going to act as a bit of a, a pusher if you will and going to help create the wake because when these adults scurry along the surface they create quite a wake that draws fish from a fair distance. And we're just going to come in like so and just trim that off and now we need a pair of legs on here that are going to help suggest the caddis legs and we're going to use some sexy floss you could use round rubber hackle if you wished and all these are designed to do is kick so when we strip they're going to move back and forth back and forth the, the real benefit of this fly is it's got the shape and the size of the traveler's sedge and it creates wake on the surface when you when you strip it so I'm going to take two sections of sexy floss I'm going to bind them in place on the top I'm going to pull one pair to the near side get them positioned take this, the other pair and slide them around to the other side Like so. Work some more thread in there to secure them in place. And we'll come in and trim these two, maybe approximately half the shank length, like so. Not quite finished, but we'll do the final trim. We'll put a little bit of resin on our tying thread, in this case the Solara is bone dry wind that right in take our whip finisher and carefully navigate the thread between the legs trim Cure. And those legs actually fluoresce a little bit too. Don't know if you can see that. That's cured, and now we need to do the final trimming on our legs. So, again, we want those front legs. Whenever you trim stretchy material, don't trim it while it's under tension, or they'll end up a lot shorter than you thought they were going to be. 
So I'm just going to grab just the front two. This back one wants to, okay, fine. We'll trim the two back two if you want to get trimmed. If you want to get in so bad. So I'm just going to gather them. Make sure they're, just trim them about even with the back of the wing. And then come in and grab these two. Trim them a little shorter. That one still looks a little longer to me. And there you go, you have the finished traveling chubby. Buoyant, relatively quick to tie, perhaps doesn't look as accurate as uh, some of the other caddis I've tied on my channel, like the Michelux Edge. But when you strip this on the water, she floats all the synthetic shed water, and it creates wake that trout just love. They crush this fly.